this is Manchester United's transfer roundup for the last one week. If you haven't been able to keep up with it because of Euros or being busy, then don't worry. I will cover everything that has happened. The first piece of good news is that we are close to signing a player and that's Zergzi from Bologna. He is a player which is different from Hoyland in the sense that he's a target man. We have seen throughout the whole season that the one thing Hoyland can't do is play as a target man, you know, like receiving long passes, playing with back to the goal. But Zergzi excels in that. In addition to it, he was playing under Thiago Mota, right, who is on his way to Juventus and he has been a really impressive manager. So you know that his basics are going to be clear. Now, if you compare him to other strikers in the Serie A, then you can see that he has really good qualities. And Zergzi is pretty young as well, around the same age group as Hoyland. So not only are we getting a different profile of player, but he is young and the biggest thing is that he might be cheap. His current release clause is around 34 million pounds and the thing about this deal, the only drawback is that AC Milan are a much more advanced stage than United. They have already talked to the player, they have already talked to the club. The only stumbling block for AC Milan is the agent commission fees. The news is that the agent is asking for a lot of money which AC Milan don't want to pay. Whereas for United, I think they are more willing to pay that commission fee. So now it's just basically a question about who can agree the commission fee faster. AC Milan are much more advanced. They have the advantage. But there are multiple reports that United are planning to trigger the release clause pretty soon. So in my books, Zergzi is probably going to be the first player we are going to sign in the summer window. And for this price point, right? For his age profile, his uh, talents and his strengths, I think we can't buy a better backup striker. Because unlike, you know, Tony or Benjamin Sesko, who would demand to play every game, you know, to be in the starting eleven, I think Zergzi would be a lot more willing to rotate with Hoyland, which will give both of them more time to develop. Now, this was the end of the good news. Like I talked about in my last transfer rumor video around two weeks ago, we had a lot of targets. But the problem here now is most of those targets are now ruled out because of their price or they're moving to other clubs. So let me give you more details. First, let's talk about Olise. Now, Olise, even though he was not a priority signing because he is a right winger, but he was one of the top targets United wanted because he would have solved a lot of problems, especially on the right wing where we needed a creative, actually useful winger. A few weeks ago, we got a news piece saying that United consider Ahmad to be one of the main stays of the squad from now on. And that already indicated that United will not go for Olise. And that's what we have seen as well. The news came out that Olise has agreed a deal to go to Bayern. That too only for 50 million, you know, 45 plus 5. And that's pretty cheap. The stumbling block for all the clubs who were chasing him is his salary. The posts are saying that Olise wanted like 200 to 250k per week. So I think United did pretty well to not agree to the deal because we don't have to pay another winger such huge prices because we already saw with Sancho what happened there. Now, in my opinion, I think Ahmad, Pelestri and Ganacho can all play the right wing and we don't have to pay that much money for Olise. Now, if you have liked my video so far and I would really appreciate if you can click on the like and subscribe button below to be a part of the community and to be notified of future uploads. So that's one target gone. Next comes up uh, Branthwaite. The thing about Branthwaite is that we already had one bid rejected for 35 million and Everton want at least like 65 to 70 million for him, which, you know, of course is overpriced. The thing about this deal is that United were waiting for Everton to lower the price because Everton had to sell a player before July 1st to meet the profit and sustainability rules. But here's the thing now. Everton, Chelsea and Aston Villa are doing kind of a weird thing. They are selling academy players to each other at a high price and also selling players. So the example of this is that Ian Madsen is going to Aston Villa for like 38 million. Newcastle is um, buying Calvert-Lewin from Everton for like 20-30 million and some academy players for like high prices too. So these three clubs are doing all of this to circumvent the PSR rules. So now Everton don't have a need to lower Brantwaite's value. They can stick to Brantwaite's 70 million price point and I think this Brantwaite drama is gonna stretch for the whole summer that we won't see an early deal for Brantwaite. So that's one of the downsides. The second target which is uh, not gonna be with us is Tradibo. 
31st transfer to United has been ruled out and has been deemed illegal because Nice and United both have been said that under the same ownership of Sergeant Ratcliffe and they are competing in the same tournament, Europa League. The thing about this deal is that Manchester City is, uh, you know, buying players from their affiliated club, but they're allowed to do so because they're not in the same competitions, right? None of the players City is buying from their partner clubs is in Champions League, so they're allowed to buy. The problem with Todibo is that we are both in the Europa League. So now, Todibo transfer has been deemed illegal and we can't buy him. Now, after Branthwaite and Todibo have been ruled out, our third option is Lin Euro. With Lin Euro, the issue is that Euro wants to go to Madrid and Euro already has a bid rejected by Liverpool for around 42 million. So now two top clubs are chasing him. He wants to go somewhere else, so it's very unlikely he will come to United. So that's three targets gone. The fourth is Jao Neves. Now, a lot of clubs are ch chasing him, but the biggest issue is Benfica. Benfica are very good negotiators. They have a history of selling very expensive players. And now they are insisting on Jao Neves' 120 mil release clause as well. I don't think he's going to be cheap at all. I think they will only stick to their price point like they did with Enzo Fernandez. So again, just like Branthwaite, this Jao Neves deal might just go throughout the whole summer and we might not even sign him. So with this, three of our top uh, transfer targets for center backs have been ruled out. Not ruled out, but like unlikely to happen. And Olise is going to Bayern. Jao Neves looks unlikely to move. And lastly, Dan Ashford drama is still going on. There seems to be no resolution for it. And I don't know why in your sense of are so adamant on Ashford. Like there are some other DOF available like Paul Mitchell. But I don't know why they're just adamant on only Ashworth and no one else. Now, in addition to all this, there are two other small rumors, you know, like they're not major transfer articles, but one of the players being linked to United is Edson Alvarez. Of course, it's an ex-Ajax player and we always get linked to an ex-Ajax player. I wouldn't take this transfer rumor seriously because it's one of those, you know, articles once again where we get linked to, you know, 200 players every transfer window and nothing ever happens. The other one is Max Kilman from Wolves and I think there might be some truth to this article, but once again, I don't think this is a transfer which will happen. Now, these were for the incomings. My biggest issue with Inyo so far has been that we haven't been selling players or we haven't been strongly linked to selling players. We all know that United has issue this summer with PSR rules that we can't buy top talents because we don't have the budget for it. And the only way to increase our budget is by selling players. But Ineos doesn't seem to be moving fast on that front. We all have seen this season that how bad majority of the squad is. And we need to sell a lot of them. But so far, there are only three rumors about selling players. The first is Victor Lindelof, who has been linked to Fenerbahce. And the rumors are that Jose Mourinho wants to uh, reunite with Lindelof. The other transfer rumor is that uh, Van Bissaka is close to moving to Galatasaray. The thing about these Turkish transfer is that yes they can buy the players but turkey has never paid a lot of money right i think lindelof might go for like 5 to 10 million and van bisaka will probably go for around 10 million you know which is pretty low but at least it's something the other one is greenwood greenwood is being heavily linked to syria with both juventus and lazio trying to get a deal juventus is trying to do a player swap with either bremer or uh, federico chiesa Whereas Lazio wants to do a straight up cash deal, but they are only offering around 30 million. In my opinion, what I would like to see from Ineos is that until the Euros is happening, it's very unlikely that we will buy players because most of them are at the Euros. Even Xerxes is with the Dutch squad, and I don't think that transfer happens until Netherlands exit from the Euros. So Ineos should be focusing on selling players currently while the Euros is going on, and after Euros, that's when the fast transfers will happen. So I would be happy if Ineos can do some early transfers, but until we raise some money, that won't be possible. This is just the start of the transfer window and it's not all doom and gloom. Yes, there are bad news and only a few pieces of good news, but still, it's only been like one and a half weeks of the transfer window being open and with Euros going on, transfers would obviously be slow. I do hope Ineos does pick up some pace and get moving on selling players. And let me know in the comments down below, 
one player you would like to sign and one player you would like to sell from this United squad. For me, I would really like United to buy a good CDM. That would be Fofana from Monaco. And the one player I would, would really want to sell is McTominay. Because we can probably get around 40 to 50 million for him and we can buy a much better CM for that price. If you have watched my video so far, then I would really appreciate it. You can click on the like and subscribe button below to be a part of the community. And you can click right here to watch my last video where I talked about Eric Ten Hag staying and what it could mean for United. Thank you for watching my video so far. I will see you all next time. Goodbye.